so hi guys how are you um i hope everybody's doing good today it's a beautiful um wednesday night here and i'm upstairs at the rooftop um i just wanted to share a short story about how i came to the united states of america um and why well first of all i'm from nigeria and the main reason why i came to the u.s when i did was because um, in the northern part of Nigeria there was um, the insurgency going on um, when the Boko Haram, you know, um, insurgents um, ravaged our town and, you know, our homes, so on and so forth. But at that time, I wasn't living in, um, you know, in the part where there was the war. I was living in the other side, like in the, in the capital, in Abuja. But um, with time, I had moved to Borno and Yobe, the northeastern part of Nigeria where the war was going on, uh, to help, um, you know, victims and survivors there. Basically because I had all the tools, I had the knowledge, and I had been doing some activism, you know, uh, speaking about it, uh, countering violent extremism, so on and so forth, just to help my people. So I decided why not go to the area where it's happening. So I moved back to the Northeast when um, things had calmed down a little bit, you know, not too much, but, um, you know, it was still going on here and there. Um, once I moved back, I kept speaking up, I kept talking about it, I kept, you know, uh, training people as well um, on how to, you know, survive attacks and, 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 and a lot of trauma counseling I did there. Um, so before then, uh, while my family was living in Borno, my dad and my siblings, uh, you know, they saw firsthand of what happened um, to people and their family and even within our family. Uh, at a point in time, our house, our main house in Borno State, became like shelter to a lot of people who had lost their homes or fled their towns and local governments, um, especially our town, Goza, where I'm from. Um, so they came to our house. So there was a lot of people in my house. Um, we had a lot of orphans. We had a lot of widows, you know, like that. It was packed. But um, I was still working and I was helping my dad feed those people and the family and making sure that everything is straight at home. Um, so once I moved back to Yobe, I was still doing that, but my children were still... I moved them back with my dad, you know, to Kano, where it's a bit safer, so I got them a house because um, our house now in Borno State had become so packed that he didn't even have space to, you know, sleep and enjoy himself as well or even to, like I just said, sleep. Um, so I had gotten him a place where he could stay, he and my stepmother. So this is where he continued to live with my children, my two older children, um, Zara and Elbisher, I had, you know, I couldn't, I didn't want to move back to the northeastern part of Nigeria with them again, since I just got them out. I was, I was willing to risk myself to make sure, you know, my people had, you know, education about how to counsel themselves and pass on most of the trainings that I had acquired from the USCID and, you know, so on and so forth. So I became a target. To cut the story, to cut the um, long story short, I became a target. Um, these insurgents started threatening me. Um, they would follow me. They would um, call me with random numbers that we couldn't track. And when I would call the police or my friends at the army or go to the police, they would just tell me to stay safe. Um, I kept doing that for a very long time, staying safe as they advised. Until one day, they had called my cousin who was staying with my children in my house. Uh, this time my children had come to visit me. So they were staying with her while I was working. I had traveled to a neighboring state, which was like just an hour drive or two hours drive. I was coming back that very day. I had only one long hijab on and my purse. So as I walked to, as I walked to, we call it Tasha, which means like, you know, the station to board a vehicle, um, I was stalked and followed by random people who came up to me and told me that um, they're gonna kill me and the time is now and the time is today. So I couldn't place where, the, you know, 
they didn't have weapons but they were just random different people just coming up to me and so I got so scared um, in the park it's like you know a van that takes about seven to eight people so I just chattered the whole van and told the guy to move and let's go so once I got into the van um, you know they had called me with a random number again to tell me that this is this is them this is Boko Haram telling me that um, my time ends now and um, I should just say my prayers because this is where it all ends so me freaking out and I called my cousin to tell her what had happened who was staying with my children she's my younger cousin so when I called her to warn her she had told me that a random number called her too and this was what she was told that you know they were gonna kill them all so now I'm really freaking out because my kids are there so I, I called a friend and I told them that you know I need a van um, and then I told her just before I called a friend when we were talking after we talked I told her to quickly pack a couple of things she doesn't have to pack anything like you know crazy just pack a couple of things um, I'm sending a vehicle to come get them so that they could all travel back to Kano where my dad is so she did that they she packed a lot of um, she packed some stuff and I sent the van um, to pick them up and I told her to just lock up the house and keep it moving and I told her to get a couple of things for me as well because I had you know I didn't come with clothes I didn't have nothing on except my long hijab and my purse so she did that they went to Kano stay with my dad um, so now because you know she was living with me with her son so she had to go with them too you know she had to start living with my dad at this point in time i wasn't about to come back so i called the people i was working for i called the office the creative associates or you know uscid that i was working for i called them and they had told me you know not to go back so i had to take a flight from bochi to abuja from one city to, from one city to another so i took the flight um and 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 I went to and I went to what you call it? I went to another state, to the capital, where where um, they had they had um, you know housed me and you know did everything they could to keep me safe. So and I'm very grateful for that, just to say the least. I'm very grateful. Now now. I'm here in Abuja thinking about my kids and what's going to happen. So at that time, I was like, you know what? I just need to leave because I keep getting threats. Now, this part of the story that I'm telling you, it's just an episode. Um, there had been a lot of threats and a lot, a lot of um, people trying to come after me or my family. And many times I had seen, you know, dead bodies in front of my house or people sending me random messages and or calling me and stuff like that so this time around I just had to take it seriously you know and I had to do something about it so that's how I filed for um, my visa I, was, I, I tried to file for asylum but then it was getting too it was so long and I couldn't just stay so I had to get a visa and once I traveled I didn't travel with my kids I tried to get a visa for my kids but then I looked at my um, money I didn't have enough to buy uh, all three of us a plane ticket and I had no help so I had to keep my father um, in Kano State in one of the cities um, I had to keep him there I had, kept, I had to keep paying rent sending money for food while I came here try to get my papers and my asylum in the United States so I got my um, I got my visa now I traveled and came down here to this country where you know I look for shelter and look for asylum seek asylum um, I didn't get my asylum till a year later so within that period of waiting I couldn't work for about six months so I was uh, surviving with my savings which is really hard for some of you who have been to this country and know how hard it is so I was surviving with my savings that I had and also taking care of the family back at home in Nigeria um, within a short period of time of me coming in I met my amazing husband 
Uh, so once we met, we didn't take long because, you know, we Muslims, we rarely date, to be honest. And at this age, at my age and at his age, we were like, you know what, let's just go straight to the point. What do you want? What do I want? Seriously, it was literally like that. And we just, you know, spoke a little for like two weeks and um, we involved, you know, a few people here and there. It wasn't so much about two two people only and we just did the nakah we got married and we've been living happily ever after it's been five years now five years strong we have two beautiful kids uh finally finally i got my children to come uh live with me here in the united states um they're here now they're with me zara is 14 she just turned 14 and elbisha will turn uh 12 sorry will turn 13 in uh in december on december 8th actually and i have a beautiful two-year-old son ayan who just turned two and i have a 10 month old daughter so we're happy i mean we're grinding we're going and we're trying to make sure that you know these kids me and my husband are trying to make sure the kids have the best that they could have and we're working hard doing what we can um we're just a peaceful loving family you know, with two different cultures, uh, trying to, you know, live and just trying to be happy. And um, I'll save this video for another time. I wanted to talk about, I want to talk about the topic about marrying somebody from a total different culture, totally different country, and how, you know, we understand each other and how happy we are and how, uh, you know everything is going for us so i'm gonna do this Ooh, my nose is oily but it's okay so i'm gonna do that um in another video to just you know uh, you know give you guys a peek into our lives my family and so on and so forth so i do hope that you guys at the end of the day would subscribe and follow my channel and um and and just you know also have comments below to tell me what you think about the video what I could improve what I could do better so on and so forth I would really appreciate it please subscribe to my channel and I'll subscribe to yours and you know we keep going like that so I'm happy to be it, this is quite new for me I don't have a lot of um subscribers and videos but it's gonna keep coming i'm gonna try my best to make it to make sure it keeps coming and we're gonna have fun so there are a lot of topics i would like to talk about um and will you know in due time but this is one of the first topics that i felt is important just to give you a glimpse of who i am and why as a Nor northern nigerian woman a house a girl or a house a woman living in the united states and having a family from you know another culture my husband is from here and he's american um and how we coexist so thank you for watching like i said before please subscribe to my channel and stick stay tuned and you know just enjoy the videos that are going to be coming and leave your comments for me below bye bye and have a good night